Okay. We're going to move on to another boring uh, uh, proportion of this broadcast, which is the United States taking a dub. I feel like, you know how people say there's a Diet Coke button on Trump's desk, or people say there's a nuclear button, right? I think American presidents unironically have an assassinate one of these fucking assets that we have been keeping tabs on button. Okay. And like every time they're like bored, there's nothing going on. There's nothing popping in the media. They just find like some old washed up fucking terrorist guy. And they're like, boom, click the button. And immediately a fucking drone drops directly on top of it. Okay. I just, I straight up feel like, I mean, this is. When the numbers are low, they hit that button. But, like, at this point, no one cares. Like, no one... Dude. Dude, we got fucking people in the American military who were born after 9-11 happened. Okay? Like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, oh, man, they got the second in command in Al-Qaeda. Sick. I mean, he just washed up. He is. Al-Qaeda fell off. Okay? Al-Qaeda fell off. This dumb motherfucker thought he could, like, come out of hiding, okay, and live inside of uh, a Taliban-controlled uh, Kabul, and it didn't work, okay? They fell off, and they fell off so fucking hard that America was very easily able to assassinate this dude. Motherfucker said Al-Qaeda fell off. I mean, it's true. It's fucking true. ISIS fell off, too. Dude was enjoying his CIA retirement and they terminated him. Yeah, exactly. Who announced it best? States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden. Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi is dead. The United States successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan that killed the Emir of Al-Qaeda. Iman al-Zawiri. A small team of Americans carried out the operation with... They fall off because they got what they wanted, you think? I mean, technically, he did. Because, like, look, I don't want to go all the way into the fucking uh, history of this time and time again because I've done it so many times. Also, it's a direct one-to-one -one comparison almost to what you could explain about currently what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, but that's more like 10 years down the line, so you'll hear about that. 10 years down the line if we survive that much and climate change doesn't kill all of us. But like, basically, in the 80s, there were some fucking homies, right, with a lot of money. And, uh, and, and in the 80s and 90s, uh, America wanted to uh, undermine any kind of fucking government that was even USSR adjacent or was uh, was was you know, a trade partner or thought that the USSR was poggers, ideologically communist, all that good stuff, right? So in an effort to destroy uh, those countries, what they wanted to do, especially uh, with respect to Afghanistan, was take on the most reactionary fundamentalist fucking weirdos, arm them, give them weapons, arm them, and then also arm them with the most important tool of all, knowledge, okay? Give them not Lambos, but the Lamborghini of like anti-aircraft weapons and also train them with said anti-aircraft weapons and also more weapons that they gave like small arms and then, you know, use them against uh, these these uh, governments, these individual governments in an effort to spark civil wars. Right. And for the record, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but some of these fundamentalists or some of the Muslims living in these regions in Afghanistan specifically, for example, had good reason to fucking despise the Afghan government because the Afghan government was butchering them at the time. The communist adjacent Afghan government was butchering them. So much so that even the USSR was like, bro, you got to stop this shit. What the fuck are you doing? Y'all are going brazy out there. Okay? Now, this, of course, triggered the Afghan civil war and the USSR's invasion of Afghanistan, okay? So America went gangbusters on that goal of utilizing the fundamentalists and also a collection, like an eclectic group of anti-Afghan government people, anti-USSR people, some of which were really fundamentalists, some of which were not, okay? 
uh, and and sparked all out fucking war in Afghanistan, which was incredibly damaging. Okay, but then the group that ended up winning that ultimately and taking control of Afghanistan was a group that you know as the Taliban. Okay, Ronald Reagan at the time, Operation Cyclone, like very famously called the Mujahideen, brave, and said that they were similar to the founding fathers. Okay. And all that good stuff. You guys know all that already, right? You guys know most of that. So while that was happening, one of these guys that was getting funding and training and much love and good positive media coverage from the United States and Western allies was a, a, a very wealthy contractor, a very wealthy contractor's son by the name of Osama bin Laden. This motherfucker was like six foot seven, okay? And he was known as a guy that you could rely on to purge the communist influence in the MENA region, okay, and in Asia. Now, of course, what ended up happening with Osama is that he met up with this other Al-Qaeda leader guy who was like a fucking doctor or some shit, okay? Um, and, and they were like, yo, let's get together and let's build Al-Qaeda. Like, this shit will be dope. What will we do? Well, you know, now that we fucking purged the USSR, there's another fucking group of individuals out there, okay? And that group of individuals is known as the United States of America and other Western forces. Like, I don't like those guys either. We got to rid, we got to rid the MENA region and we got to rid Asia and the Gulf of US influence. You know, bite the hand that feeds, right? So... Basically, they got together and they did Al Qaeda and, and, you know, Al Qaeda did a bunch of terror attacks, but like nowhere significant to American interests that much, like, or at least mainland American interests that much until they decided, no, we're going to do mainland America now. And they did what is known as 9-11. Okay. The mind boggling profile of Osama bin Laden came out exactly 20 years ago today. Yeah, anti Soviet warrior puts his army on the road to peace. I mean, look at that. Look at that shit. The hierarchy of power in Al Qaeda is about to change. Wait, what? Shut the fuck up. Dwayne The Rock Johnson did not just tweet this out. He did it again. No, it's a parody of his announcement of the killings of Osama. Yeah, I know. That's why I said he did it again. What the fuck? But you said Saudi did 9-11? First of all, motherfucker, where do you think this guy comes from? Where do you think the hijackers come from? Where do you think what royal family gave them money? You fucking idiot. Afghanistan, maybe? What are you, fucking uh, Dick Cheney? No, obviously not Afghanistan. Saudi Arabia! Iraq? You talking about Iraq? Iraq? Is that who you're talking about? It might be Iran. No. Afghanistan's involvement in this process is that they were kind of brothers in bond. You know what I mean? They were just like homies. They were homies. They were, they were like, oh, yeah, we got the same fucking weapons and same training that you guys got. Come on. Like, you know, we can just chill inside of Afghanistan. We can just, we, we just be chill under the Taliban regime. You know, you guys are fundies. We're fundies. Who gives a fuck, right? Huh. So. They were letting Al-Qaeda couch surf. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. And uh, that's kind of where they were training and stuff. But now... Don't the U.S. sell weapons to Saudi Arabia? You are going to be very shocked to find out that those weapons end up in the hands of Al-Qaeda regularly. A very important talking point that I brought up while talking about Dan Crenshaw, but everybody obviously hyper-focused on the hyperbolic statements like his eye hole or uh, whether or not America deserved it, but nobody fucking cared about me saying, Dan Crenshaw, you're literally 
voting to give weapons to Al-Qaeda in Yemen. Uh, if you guys remember that. Double down, bro. Bitch, I've like doubled down. I've doubled down on it like a million times. I'm so sick and tired of your constant conspiracy theories like the U.S. funded Al-Qaeda and the film industry is, is an arm of the U.S. military. I'm going to turn this shit off and go watch an 80s action movie. <laughs> Good one, Chatter. Yeah. Oh, wait. Those guys that seem to be aligned with John Rambo. Wait, wait a minute. Aren't those guys the guys that we've been, uh, you know, spending the past 20 years killing? What the fuck? Anyway, so all that fun stuff happened, and then this fucking dickhead who's like 7 million years old, okay, had bold ambitions of, I guess, like uh, reinstituting Al-Qaeda, but they're washed. They're fucking washed. So basically, uh, you know, he, he thinks that he can come back into Afghanistan or come out of hiding in Afghanistan, and America was like, nope. And hit the fucking assassination button. I don't even know if they like ended up torching the entire block and how many fucking children died as a consequence of this. But you know, I wouldn't be surprised if like you know a, a bunch of kids were also eviscerated in the process. You know, collateral damage, obviously. So uh, let's see, let's We've see. The, the media now hyped this up like this is the huge thing. Kabul. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan will join us live in just a few moments. President Biden addressing the nation last night. Our senior White House correspondent Mary Bruce has all the details on the CIA operation. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. You even gave commentary on it already? Next level pre-watching? What? This leader, they did it literally in the most like America way possible where they murked the entire family of the ISIS leader. And they're saying that he actually blew himself up. Now, witnesses on the ground give different reports on what actually ended up happening versus what the American government is claiming that happened. It's like most of the children and women died. Like, it's just mostly women and children dead, the ISIS leader dead. I can't wait for the next one. What? Tr uh, strong point in favor of your theory that, that we have these PR stunts ready to go. Trump had a chance to kill Al-Qaeda's leader, but didn't because he didn't recognize the name, report says. Bro, I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you, they, like, Dude, okay, 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 listen to me, listen to me. Osama bin Laden was literally down the fucking street from Pakistan, which is a CIA client state, operated almost entirely by the fucking CIA, working to benefit the interests of, uh, of the American State Department, Pakistan's military economy! You think these motherfuckers didn't know where he was? Come the fuck on, dude. What the fuck? Shit. Morning, Mike. Oh, you paused before the prediction? And, you know, ISIS leader one uh, murder was so good. So poggers. Where's the next one? You know what I'm saying? Like, hella f kids died, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, 13 civilians, including six children of four women were killed. Wait, where's the prediction? The and they said it was a secondary explosion. Do you guys remember? Where's the prediction? I'm not making a prediction about Al-Qaeda here. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, look, look, look. Remember where that comes from? Anyway, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about all that. We're going to talk about all that. So let's Oh, because I said can't wait for another one. I mean, yeah, of course. Legit question. Why does the USA kill people they want? Can't Al-Qaeda come to the USA and kill people that kill their leaders? What are they going to do, bro? How are they going to do that? The only way that Al-Qaeda comes into the United States of America right now and kills like an American president or I don't know, like an American leader or whatever, is if the CIA is directly helping them. Uh, just like they did under the watchful eye of the CIA last time. Two fucking planes flew into towers. God damn it, bro. You are going to make me act up. In the month of August, okay? Jesus Christ. Uh. 
Uh, anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Watch. Michael, well, this was an extraordinary CIA operation. Extraordinary. Oh, my God. No one could have ever foreseen this. Kept secret for many months, tracking Zawahiri's every movement and culminating in a precision strike ordered by the president. This morning, new details about the CIA drone strike in downtown Kabul that left one of the most wanted men in the world dead on his balcony. Justice has been delivered, and this terrorist leader is no more. Ayman al-Zawahiri, the leader of al-Qaeda, had been Osama bin Laden's right-hand man, a key architect behind the bombings of American embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, the suicide bombing of the U.S. Navy ship Cole off the coast of Yemen, and the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon in September of 2001 that left nearly 3,000 dead, hunted by the U.S. for more than two decades. No matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. Where Zawahiri was found was right in the middle of Kabul, in one of the wealthiest neighborhoods very near the U.S. Embassy. A senior U.S. official saying the CIA learned that he had moved to Kabul to reunite with his wife and children. For months, the CIA watched the house. Zawahiri never left, but was frequently seen on the balcony. The official said President Biden was first briefed on the intelligence in April, and as more information was confirmed, gave the go-ahead early last week. After carefully considering the clear and convincing evidence of his location, I authorized a precision strike that would remove him from the battlefield once and for all. Days later, the time was right. Early Sunday in Kabul, with the armed drone invisible overhead, Zawahiri walked out on his balcony, and two Hellfire missiles were launched right at him, killing him immediately. But the administration says no civilians, including his family inside the house, were harmed. The operation occurs nearly a year after U.S. troops withdrew from Afghanistan, and the Taliban quickly took over prompting security concerns over the ability of the U.S. to counter terrorist threats in Afghanistan. Yeah. And I made a promise to the American people. Yeah, we really, dude, the terrorist threats in Afghanistan, man. Oh, my God. You know what the biggest terrorist threat in Afghanistan is? Uh, America not giving Afghanistan and the current government that we gave Afghanistan to, it's fucking billions of dollars. Okay. That's the biggest uh, threat of terror to the, to the lives of the Afghan people at this moment. Okay? That's it. This shit sucks. Shut the fuck up. It's just incredibly funny, though. Uh, it, it is incredibly funny to like fucking, uh, it, you know, double tap some fucking old carcass basically and be like, yeah, look alive, Jack. We did it. We did it again. America never forgives. America never forgets. It's like, bro, what? He already succeeded, dog. It's too late. You can fucking two tap him all you want. This motherfucker already got what he wanted. It's like that Onion article of, like, uh, Al-Qaeda decides to just sit back and watch the collapse of the United States. It's just true. You know what I mean? Homie was already retired. He was, uh, he was medically retired <laughs> from terrorism. Anyway. Look alive, Jack! The funniest part about it is that America basically built a competitor to Al-Qaeda and participated in the collapse, or rather, like, you know when we think, like, Al-Qaeda uh, is washed? Like, when we say Al-Qaeda is washed, L plus ratio? Like, part of it is because we built the competitor. ISIS. Like, we literally built the competitor, and then we also fucking, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> we keep using them as like a major W as well. It's great. So, you know, great. Good job. You guys got him. 
You guys fucking got him, dude. You did it. We did it, Joe. Another another dub for Brandon. I just don't believe that like anyone gives a shit about it. But maybe I'm wrong. And we continue to conduct effective counterterrorism operations in Afghanistan and beyond. We've done just that. But the fight against Al Qaeda and ISIS is far from over. Administration officials say they believe senior Taliban leaders knew of Zawahiri's presence in the capital city and tried to cover it up after he was killed by quickly taking. Oh yeah, let's get back in there, baby. Yo, we gotta go back in there. They let the, they let the fucking 800 year old relic back into Kabul, bro. We gotta go back in there. Taliban, they're working with, a, they're working with Al Qaeda again. Uh oh. Taking his family out of the house. Zawahiri may have assumed that the Taliban could protect him, which may have emboldened him to return to Kabul. But that proved a deadly mistake. We have eliminated the Emir of Al Qaeda. He will never again, never again, allow Afghanistan to become a terrorist safe haven. And while there is no denying this operation is a huge success for the CIA, it does show that the Taliban is still harboring Al Qaeda terrorists. And George, we don't know how. Bro, he says. We can never allow Afghanistan to become a terrorist safe haven. And it's like. Bro, we did that. Like, it's already there. You, you say the Taliban are terrorists, too. Like, what do you mean? And we gave the country to them. Like, who, who the fuck? So what is it then? How many others there may be? Yeah, that is one of the big questions right now. Meantime, Mary, tensions are rising with China ahead of Speaker Pelosi's touchdown in Taiwan. If China making clear they would view any potential trip by the speaker as a major provocation because, of course, they view Taiwan as their sovereign territory. China saying they could even fire. So do you. So do you. Shut the fuck up. So do you. Again. So do you. Their missiles around Taiwan potentially breaching airspace or water in the region. Now, I'm told this trip by the speaker is still very much on the table. The president has said that the military thinks this is not a good idea, but the White House is also stressing that the speaker has every right to go. Anyway, um, this is an L for Dark Brandon, dude. Just bringing national security. But hey, let's let's hear more coverage about how fucking incredible this was. Hold Advisor on. Jake Sullivan right now. Jake, a lot to talk about this morning. Let's start with what Mary was just saying about Speaker Pelosi's trip to Taiwan. How worried are you about China's response? Well, first, I think it's important to note that this is the speaker's decision because Congress is an independent branch of government and members of Congress determine where they're going to travel. Second, a speaker of the House has previously traveled to Taiwan, so there is precedent for this. And members of Congress go there all the time, including many who have gone there this year. So if China chooses to try to turn a potential visit by the speaker into a crisis or tries to use it as a pretext to take aggressive action around Taiwan, that's on them. The United States is not looking for escalation, but it's awesome when you say it happens all the time, which is why the last time it happened was in 1997. When China was like literally just drastically different uh, with respect to its global power too. Like, oh, we're not looking for escalation, but like we will fuck you up. Actually, we will fuck you up. Yo, yo, hold me back. Hold me back. I will fuck you up, dude. But of course, we will reserve the right to ensure that we are defending our interests and we will stay vigilant to whatever China chooses to do in the coming hours and days. OK, let's talk about the operation against our Hiri long hunt over 20 years. Uh, but what difference will it make right now? And are you worried about possible retaliation? So first, uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri was the emir, the leader of al-Qaeda, for more than a decade after the death of bin Laden. 
he was the man who was the most inspirational figure, uh, the strategic leader, someone who sent guidance regularly to affiliates around the world, someone who sent out messages inspiring his followers to attack and kill Americans and harm the United States, someone who tried to hold together a global network of terrorists that could continue to threaten both America and Americans. And taking him out has undoubtedly made the United States safer. It's also done well. <laughs> It has proven the president <laughs> right when he said one year. Oh, dude, I love it when they say, when they say this, it's like, yeah, uh, I know the fucking mass shooter killed half the town, but guess what? The cops finally ended up killing him as he was leaving and had no more bullets left. Except it's even worse than that because, like, they killed him literally 20 fucking years after. Like, they couldn't even get him for the 20th anniversary, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he said, America is so much safer now that this 800-year-old relic has been murdered. year ago that we did not need to keep thousands of American troops in Afghanistan fighting and dying in a 20-year war to be able to hold terrorists at risk and to defeat threats to the United States. He proved that with the order of this decisive strike over the weekend, and again, Americans are safer for that. As you know, some of your critics say the fact that he was right there in downtown Kabul, as Senator James Inhofe put it, reflects the total failure of the Biden administration's policy towards that country. Your response? My response is number one, uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri is no more. We have taken the leader of Al-Qaeda off the battlefield. That is success. Number two, we were fighting in Afghanistan for two decades. American men and women were putting their lives at risk. Many died, many were injured. In that entire 20 year period, Ayman al-Zawahiri was alive. We left Afghanistan. There is not a single American in harm's way in that country in uniform. And there was nobody on the ground. Yeah, with that many qualifiers, you're right, I guess. <laughs> in uniform uh, when this strike occurred, and yet we were able to take uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri off the battlefield. I would call that a successful, effective policy. Why do you have to say in uniform, you think? I wonder... I wonder why he had to say that. See that protects our troops, protects our people, and ensures that Afghanistan will not be a safe haven for terrorists. It certainly was not a safe haven for Ayman al-Zawahiri. But how will the United States hold the Taliban accountable for violating the Doha agreement, harboring the leader of al-Qaeda? Dog, what are they going to do? Steal more of their money? Like, what are they going to do? We already have all the money. Like, the only thing remaining is just, like, steal more of their money. You can't do that. What are they going to do? Starve them further with sanctions? Oh, wait, they're doing that. The only thing that George Stephanopoulos can, you know, the only thing we have in our tool belt at this point is just fucking invading again. Well, first, we have shown, uh, not just in word, but in deed, we're prepared to take action to defend our interests, and the Taliban understand we'll keep taking action to ensure that no al-Qaeda leader who is threatening the United States can possibly have safe haven in Afghanistan or anywhere else in the world. We are in direct communication with the Taliban on this, and I'm not going to telegraph our next moves, but the Taliban well understand the United States is going to defend its interests resolutely and ensure that Afghanistan cannot be used as a platform to attack our country. Jake Sullivan, thanks for your time this morning. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. This is so funny because they have to say that. Because, like, that was the justification for the Afghan invasion post 9-11. Like. That's the only reason why they're saying that. Like, oh yeah, well. Afghanistan can't be a launching ground to invade America.